Good afternoon, everyone, uh, or good morning, and uh, welcome to uh, Church Online. <laughs> I know uh, Pastor Craig uh, gave us a warm greetings, and I praise God that we are able to connect to this, uh, you know, like our mentors and uh, leaders that they are able to give us some encouragement and, you know, love for the church and for the people, especially to Pastor Doc and Pastor Rache. So, uh, today, I praise God for opportunity and the privilege to share the word to you. Uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous because uh, it's my first time online, okay? So, I just want to give the honor and the, uh, you know, the respect to Pastor Doc and Pastor Rache. So, let's give them a clap of praise. Thank you for uh, the privilege and for the opportunity. So, for those who doesn't know me, uh, my name is uh, Gosh Ambat and I'm... Uh, one of the primary leaders of this church and we welcome you for the first timers second timers and third timers and even those who are uh, watching in the philippines thank you for tuning in thank you for my my friends okay that are supporting me so today pastor doc gave me uh the topic of relationship okay so uh relationship series all right and i've entitled this uh message friendship or finship Okay, but before we go, I want us to open our Bibles in John chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. So I'm reading from NIV. It says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity that we can listen once again and gather once again. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of the believers. That, Lord, we will be able to encourage one another and we will be uh, prepared for your coming. And, Lord, today... I pray that you open our hearts, you open our minds, Lord God. Use me as your mouthpiece, that people will learn and uh, apply it in their daily, daily lives. The Lord, this uh, teaching or preaching, Lord, will not just be an information, but it will bring transformation in our lives. So, Lord, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, first question is, what kind of relationships do we have? Uh, Pastor Doc last week was talking about the discipleship, so I'm just following uh, the metaphor that we are all in a ship, okay? So the question is, are you in friendship or finship, okay? Uh, maybe some of you are wondering, what is friendship? So let me give it to you. Because uh, friendship in the Bible, when they talk about friendship, uh, especially in Greek, Greek and Hebrew, it means one who loves. Okay, so tell the person next to you, one who loves. Ben, one, say it. One who loves. So, friendship, uh, friendship is quite the opposite, okay? So, I look at the dictionary and I found out that friendship is a wicked or a cruel person, okay? Uh, during the time Pastor Doc gave me my topic, uh, me and LJ and Noah, we were watching the series of Lord of the Rings. And he was wondering, who are these people? Why they have big ears, you know? Why they are ugly, they are, uh, you know, all the orcs and whatever. And I told him, these are fiends, you know, like fiends. So they are wicked and cruel person. So again, the question is, do we have friends or we have fiends in our life? Because part of our purpose is to be relational asset and not a liability in the lives of the people God sent to you. Again, let me repeat. Part of our purpose is to be a relational asset and not a liability in the lives of the people God sent to you. So in other words, part of our purpose, part of us being a disciple is to be a friend. Okay? And again, the meaning of friend in the Bible, it says one who loves. Okay? We know that we are all designed for relationship. God created everything perfect. He said everything was good. But there was one instance that he said, 
uh, it is not good is when Adam, he saw him alone. So here we could say, yes, uh, Adam, it's not just about the companion, it's not about the Adam having a wife, but it's all about the companionship, okay? So originally God designed everyone to have relationship. No one wants to be alone, okay? Whether you are an introvert or extrovert, uh, Ati Karen is an introvert, she likes to stay in her room, but when you go inside her room, you know what she's doing? She's talking to people. She is still relational, okay? So today, God, I believe, wants us to re-evaluate, okay? Or reassess what kind of relationships do we have? Because by the end of the day, you will realize that your list, your long list and priority is not what you think, okay? Because God sent certain people into the lives of certain people during certain seasons for certain reasons. Again, God sent certain people into the lives of certain people during certain seasons for certain reasons. You know, we may have a lot of friends in our lives, but they're gone. Okay? And later you will understand why they gone. So people in your life are not just an accident. You should not see them as an accident. But it is a consequence of a divine providence. Okay? God knew that you need this certain somebody for your certain specific season. So you should think your friendship, uh, or so you should think that your friendship was not an accident. You should see friendship as an assignment. Okay? Tell this person next to you, assignment. 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 Okay? Assignment. And when this assignment is accurately understood, then you will be able to honestly answer this question. What kind of relationship do I have? Or what kind of relationship, or what kind am I? Am I a friend or am I a fiend to someone? Because again, there are three types of friends that you can be. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. So number one, you can be a friend you like to be, okay? Number two, you can be a friend others want you to be, okay? And number three, you can be a friend God wants you to be. Now, most of the time, these three do not get along well, okay? Because there will be situations that, you know, your friends want you to be, or some situation that others want you to be, but most of the time, God wants you to be, okay? Again, you have to make a decision. You have to choose which one you will please, okay? You cannot please all. And if you choose God, then you increase the capacity of you effectively accomplishing your purpose, okay? Because you're just not in people's lives to give them company, but you're in people's lives to accomplish your purpose and theirs, okay? Because when God wants to bless people, he doesn't just send them, uh, send it, you know, in, in mail or delivery. Sometimes they show up in two legs, okay? Sometimes God's blessing don't come floating, but they're walking into your lives, okay? Or cycling for your lives. Shout out to my cycle for Christ. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so, so today, God wants us to be a friend that you need, not just a friend that you want. Again, God wants us to be a friend that you need and not just a friend that you want. Because sometimes what we want are not so good, okay? It can be damaging into our inner being, it can be damaging into our souls. So look at this, because what we want from friends can be condensed in two categories. Number one, loyalty. Say loyalty. Loyalty. So this is where you say, yeah, bro, you defend me, you stick with me, uh, you know, you don't smile at me, but you stab, stab me behind my back. Uh, you better not telling me others about my witnesses. You know, you can't be like Judas. This is what it means to be loyal, okay? Because Judas sold Jesus Christ for money, so he was unloyal to Jesus, right? And again, don't look at the person next to you. Maybe you're the, the person next to you is so loyal, all right? But look at number two. Number two is acceptance. Say acceptance. 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 This is what you, what you see in me is what you get. Okay? I don't need to pretend or I don't need to act when I'm around you. Alright? 
my presence, you know, I can be free to be me. You don't need to pretend that, oh, I'm, I'm a good in this area, I'm good at this area, so that you just feel accepted. Okay? These two are admirable traits and biblical traits that you should look for in a friend. They are what we want, but they are not always what we need. Because some loyalty are good for us, uh, some loyalty are good for, you know, some things. And if that loyalty is not biblical loyalty, then the loyalty is not beneficial. There are two types of loyalty. Number one, loyalty to what people want. Okay? You are loyal to what people want. Number two, the biblical loyalty to what people need. Alright? Not everything we want is good for our well-being especially in the spiritual side when we are not conscious and careful enough we can be so loyal to the degree that you're so loyal that you assist people in destroying their lives in the name of loyalty hello there are two types of relationship that we'll look at okay uh, even though there are so many examples in the bible that about friendship uh, you can use ruth naomi joshua caleb shadrach Meshach. Abednego and Daniel and many more but I got a text from my friend David a man after God's own heart yeah I got a text recently and he told me that we can use his story all right so we're gonna jump into his story and there are two relation two types of relationship that he wants to show us okay number one is the relationship of David and Jonathan if you don't know who David is, I'll just quick, quickly give you a background story. Okay, David was a shepherd boy who, uh, who, who is the one who defeated Goliath, and he became the king. All right, and many of you know the story, but Jonathan, maybe some of you don't know so much about him. But today, I'll tell you who Jonathan is. Jonathan, on the other hand, is the son of the king. Okay, King Saul. So it means he was the heir to the throne. Before David was the man, before David was the guy, before David was the one who slew the giant, yeah, it was Jonathan, okay? Jonathan was the one who was defeating armies, leading armies, and etc. So, let's read 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. I'm reading from NIV, okay? Again, uh, from verse 1, it says, After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan came, uh, became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept with him and did not let him return to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. So whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was successful that Saul gave him high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. So again, Jonathan did not get intimidated with David's success. Okay? Because as you can see, all these troops have been uh, favoring David more. Okay? But Jonathan kept to his promise. He kept to his bond. He did not break that bond with David. This is one of the famous uh, stories that about friendship. Okay, but you know where King Saul got intimidated? Yeah, he was jealous of the achievements of David. And what did he do? He wanted to kill David. But because of Jonathan's friendship, okay, Jonathan was able to spare David's life. In other words, he helped him survive. He helped him. Uh, not destroy his life and that's what we call biblical loyalty tell the person next to you biblical loyalty, biblical loyalty. so number two the next relationship that we uh, David wants us to see is the relationship of David and Joab okay second Samuel chapter 11 verse 14 to 18 it says in the morning David wrote a letter a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In it he wrote, Put Uriah out in the front where the fighting is the fiercest. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab and the city 
under siege, he put Uriah at the place where he knew the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. Joab sent David a full account of the battle. So, fast forward. Now, David is the king, okay? And Joab is the captain of his army, okay? And Uriah is Bathsheba's husband, okay? So again, if you don't know the story, you can read it later on. It's, there's so much to this, and I don't think I'll have time. But to give you the, the context of the story. So basically, David wants to kill Uriah because he's hiding his sin, okay? David committed adultery, and, you know, he just wants to hide his sin. But look at this. He says word to his captain, who is also a friend, to kill Uriah. So he doesn't need to kill himself because of what he did with Bathsheba. So Joab was so loyal to David, he killed Uriah without even asking why. When you hear that, you know, wow, what kind of a friend is that? You know, no question asked. I'll do it. You know, how many of you wants that? Maybe some of you are saying now, Sana all, Sana all of my friends are like that. You tell them one thing and they do it. But watch this. Watch this. Don't miss this one. It says, Joab had was a worldly loyalty and not biblical loyalty. Because what Joab actually did helped David almost ruin his life. Jonathan actually helped David okay, in his life. But Joab helped David ruin his life. How many of you are helping and aiding in ruining your friend's life? Are you a friend or are you a fiend? Because you know what happened after Joab did this? Uh, uh, the, uh, Prophet Nathan prophesied to, da to David that this is what happened. After Joab did this, after they killed Jeriah, David's baby died. Okay, uh, his, David's other son called uh, Amnon, raped his sister Tamar, okay, or Tamar. Then his other son, Absalom, became so full of pride and ambitions, tried to overthrow David in his position as king because of what Nathan prophesied. Remember Nathan said to him, because of what you did, the sword will never leave your house. And sometimes us, Christians and disciples, because we are helping our friends, so-called friends, in destroying their lives, the curse is upon them. Are you a friend? Or are you a fiend? In the name of loyalty and acceptance, he helped the friend destroy his life. You see, a real friend would rather hurt your feelings than see you hurt your life. Okay? A real friend is not going to laugh at you when you're about to jump on a cliff. A real friend will tell you that I love you so much that I won't allow your destruction be my entertainment. Hello. Do you love your friend? God did not send you to this person to assist them to their destruction, but to assist them in being whom God called them to be. So again, don't laugh at me if I'm about to ruin my life. Don't laugh at your assignments if they're about to destroy their life. You have to do something friendly. Remember friendly. One who loves. You have to save them from their destruction. If you're my friend, you will show me my blind side. If you're my friend, you will tell me, look, this is your weakness. You have to be strengthened in this area. You'd rather hurt my feelings than see me hurt my life. Tell the person next to you, hurt me, baby. Hurt me, baby. <laughs> so never say to yourself that I saw that coming. When you see something, open your mouth and tell me. Okay? Don't let me see. Don't uh, allow me to destroy my life. And then you say, I'll oh, see I saw, I saw that coming. Yeah? If we don't do that, if we, have, if we don't have friends that tells us that, then we are not in the ship of friends. We are in the ship of fiends. Okay? 
fiends, wicked person, uh, yeah, bad people. We all need somebody in our lives that you can trust. Someone that will bear or bring you bad news. Okay? How many of you wants bad news? Not many loves bad news. But you need bad news in your life. Okay? You need someone bringing bad news in your life. And I know for a fact that if you are bringing this news to me, I'm not trying to gossip about you. You're telling me something because it's for my best interest. Okay? You're looking out for me. You are the other set of eyes. And God has sent you to help me to put my life back into order. And you know who I'm talking about. Your cell leaders, your pastors, you know, and your true friends, biblical friends are the ones who tells you these things. Okay? Because the world has used friends, the word friends, too loosely. Okay? The word friends, we use, we abused it so much. Like... For example, we see someone on the street. I said, you say, hey, you wave. And someone will ask you, oh, who's that? Oh, my friend. Your friend, but you don't even have that relationship with them. Okay? Your friends and followers on Facebook or your Instagram. Do you really know them? Yeah? And you know why they add you? Because like I said, it is just for entertainment. Your life to them is just an entertainment. Okay? I will talk more about that in details. But that's why many people are hurting. They are in a never-ending cycle of hurts and pain because of this one problem. Are you ready? Look at this. We give title to people who did not earn it. I mean, what I meant is you give the title of friendship to people who did not earn it. There are those that got hurt so much, even deleted their social media, blocked this person here and there because they were so broken for mismanaging their relationship. I say this because whatever we can manage, whatever we cannot manage, we will lose. All right? They build walls around them, then building bridges. They are the only one, you know, your true friends are the only ones that you can really call and trust with your business. You know I have a verse for this. John 15 verse 13. Look at this. In NIV. It says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. So if you call them friends, you give them your life. Associates and assignments gets your gifts. I don't even need to know you. I don't even need to like you. I don't need to, you know, whatever. So you can get my gifts to get my gifts. But I don't even need to, you know, uh, qualify you if you can get my gifts. Because Jesus gives everybody gifts. Okay? But this is where it, uh, you know, you have to be serious on this. You need to qualify who gets you. Okay? Again, verse 14. John 15 verse 14 says... You are my friends, Jesus said. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Okay? Instead, I have called you friends for everything I learned from my father I have made known to you. You need to qualify who basically gets your business. Tell the person next to you, qualify who gets your business. Qualify who gets your business. A servant does not know the master's business. Jesus was basically telling the disciples that their relationship just shifted. Okay? It shifted from what it was to friendship. Okay? And you know it shifted because now you know the father's business. Servants do not know the business or the heart of the master. Jesus said that they can get my gift, but not my business. This is why many so-called Christians and disciples are stuck being servants because they do not know God's business. They never shifted from servanthood to friendship to sonship. Okay? That's another topic, but let's focus. Jesus said, servants may get my time, but they don't get my business. Okay? 
And if you don't understand this, you may give your gift to the right person, but your business to the wrong. Paul said you're supposed to love everybody. Jesus says you're supposed to love everybody. But you can't, get, you can't give your business to everyone. Finally, Jesus said to his disciples, now that you have demonstrated, you, they were tested, that it, they can be trusted with business, you know, it is something that an average person, like I said, the person that you just saw on the street, you can't call them friends because they never really demonstrated or they cannot yet be trusted by the access in your life. They cannot be trusted with the business that you have. That's why you know the problem of many struggles, you know, the people who struggle to make it, is that average Christians doesn't know how to handle their own business. Again, average Christians talks too much. Okay? Don't look at the person next to you. I didn't, I didn't say that. The average Christian talks too much. We talk too much. We tell our stories, our success, our ups and downs and whatever. To anyone that we never qualify. God gave us wisdoms. Wisdom, my friends. I used to talk too much too. And I've learned uh, the hard lesson. You know, I've lost many friends because I talk too much. But in the end, because we talk too much... We are the one ended up hurting, uh, discouraged, and broken, helpless. Because instead of us talking to the right people, we talk to those who never earned it. It means they are servants. Okay? You get hurt and you just start to talk to anybody that will listen. Even sometimes we saw people in Starbucks or Costa. You say, hey brother, how are you? You want to talk? <laughs> you know? Type, type down the comment below say, I talk too much. Jesus said, a friend can be trusted with business. Good or bad, up and down. You can be trusted with my gifts, but you can also be trusted with my business. We have to be uh, uh, better stewards, okay? How and who we manage our lives with. Because, like again, Paul said, we don't owe everybody access what we owe people is love. He said it in Romans, okay? You can read it in Romans. You owe people love. You don't owe people access, okay? Because we give access too easily. We get upset when they mismanage that access. A friend can be trusted with business. And when your friend and they, and, when, uh, and if you are a friend and they trust you with their business, okay? They trust you, okay, with their business and not who you trust. In other words, stop gossiping. In other words, stop telling them their business. So if someone trusts you with their business, you don't have the right to share to others what they've shared to you. Amen? Again, a lot of people ended up in a never-ending cycle of brokenness, pain, because of what others talk, tell us. Oh, yeah, say about them. Because, you know, they leak to somebody who also have leaks. Okay? So, you have to qualify who gives your life, who, who, who gets your life. You need to qualify uh, who gets your business. Okay? Because, again, if you are my friend, if you can, uh, if you know my business, like, if you can handle my business, then you can be my friend. If you can be trusted with my business, you can be my friend. So tell the person next to you, let's talk business. Let's talk business. business. See, everybody gives you gift, but you have to qualify who gets you. If I give you friendship, look at this. If I give you friendship, I give you me. Okay? What does God wants me to give you? We're talking about purpose of being a friend God wants us to be. What does God want you to get when you get me? Okay? Because one we realize the biblical friendship that we're learning right now, you'll discover that you probably have a lot of associates and a few friends and assignments. I thought I have a lot of friends. But when I was learning this, I realized I got a lot of associates. Okay? I'll discuss more about that later. Because some people we call friends are just the byproduct of you know, uh, our schedules. 
uh, it's a consequence of converging. So when we work together, we can call, we think that they are friends, we call them friends. When you play together, you play Mobile Legends together, or you play basketball together, you have the same team or whatever. You know, these are just a pro product of the same common interest. But it doesn't mean that they are your friends. Because if I ask you the question, what happens now if your schedules are different? What happens now if he moved to a different team or he plays a different game? Are you still friends? So if we are friends, this is what you're supposed to get from me and I get from you. Number one, <clears throat> real character, okay? It is an unshakable character, not even loyalty. Van Moody said, there is no such thing as a neutral relationship. Every relationship impacts you in some way. Either it helps you or hurts you, it builds you up or tears you down. It brings you high or low. Then again in Proverbs verse 13 to 20, he says, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. You walk with successful people, you'll be successful. Walk with faithful people, you'll be faithful. Walk with people who does their devotion, you will do your devotion. You walk with leaders, you will be leaders. But you walk with lazy, or you be with lazy, or you sleep with lazy, you will be lazy. First Corinthians says, uh, First Corinthians fifteen thirty three says, "Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. How is your character and attitude right now?" Are they progressing or re digressing? Okay? There's a no, there is no neutral in a relationship. We don't want chameleons. They're not reptiles. They are human beings. Okay? Reptiles, they thermoregulate thermo from cold to hot. Your friends cannot be like that. It's just one. Okay? You need to have a consistent kind of character. You want a high quality kind of character, an unshakable kind of character and integrity. In other words, I don't need to worry about you being jealous of me because you never carried this character in the first place. Period. You never have to worry about someone stealing, cheating, deceiving, gossiping because all this type of character you never possess. Okay? Because if you do, just say, just for example, you possess these things, you possess this character in your life. And if our relationship goes bad, I would, I'm going to have to wonder which one will come out. There's a lot of our friends, we know this, when their things go bad, our relationship goes bad, the character that they're hiding, it's gonna come out. Okay? This is why sooner or later, whatever that thing is, is gonna come out. You're probably thinking right now, oh, my friends won't do that to me. My friends are loyal. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. They may never do it to you on purpose, but these things, whether you like it or not, will come out, okay? We can go out, eat together, we can go play together, we can support the same team together, etc., etc. But they don't qualify for your business. Amen? Are you still there? Amen. Okay, number two. What you get from me and what you, I should get from you is real love. Say real love. Real love. Real love. A friend, Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. A friend loves when? It says, at all times. Is it sometimes? No. When I have money, when I have a job, when I have success, when I am at my best or at my worst. It says, a friend loves at all times. Tell the person next to you, all times. All the times. You see, biblical friends can handle my highs and my lows. And your view of me do not change your love for me. That's why, are you mature enough to see the worst in me and still respect the best in me? Jesus was like that to Peter. How many of you are done with Peter? Like you're tired of Peter. Because remember, Peter, <laughs> Peter is the one who betrayed Jesus, okay? How many of your friends have betrayed you once? Yeah? How many of your friends have betrayed you twice? Okay? LJ will always say to Noah, I'm not your friend! 
I'm not your friend because you know no one runs to me and tells me what L, whatever LJ is doing especially when uh, we tell them that you're not allowed to for example you're not allowed to watch YouTube no one will run to us and then he will say LJ is watching YouTube so I go down and tell LJ off and then he will tell uh, no I'm not your friend yeah so you know Jesus was like that uh, Peter was like that he betrayed Jesus three times we know the story even look at this Jesus still loved Judas even though he knew who Judas was because we owe everybody love but there's a difference between Judas and Peter look at this Judas had a bad heart okay but Peter had a bad day all right don't lose a good friend over a bad day don't lose a good friend over a bad day love without condition it means the real love okay even if you don't condone my behavior you love me as a person how many of friends how many of your friends who does uh, stupid things yeah I have lots <laughs> my friends do stupid things but you know ooh, if we're not streaming I'm gonna say something but thank you Lord so you know <laughs> look at this <coughs> We, you know, we, we tell our friends, ah, that's so stupid, but it's okay. Do you want something to eat? You know, all right, let's go. You've done your stupid things. Let's go. Fix up, etc. Yeah. Verse 17 says, a brother is born of time of adversity. Born for a time when you are at your worst. Or these so-called friends are only there because you're at your best. Are they going to be there at your worst? This is why when we are friends, I need to see you, okay? Even though I'm at my worst, I need to see you at your best. When your friends uh, goes down, they need to see you at your best to help them. It's reciprocal, okay? <clears throat> Let me show you how small your friends list and followers list. That when you're at your worst, who are you gonna call? You scroll on your Facebook friends. You scroll on your phone. How many people will you will actually call? Later tonight, uh, this uh, afternoon, you will discover more about your friends. Number three, real honesty. Again, real honesty. Proverbs 27 verse 6 says, Wounds from a friend can be trusted but an enemy multiplies kisses wounds from a friend can be trusted because that wound is in my best interest remember i said earlier i'd rather see you hurt me than you see my life getting destroyed you're not saying it to hurt me but to help me but if you're gonna hurt my feelings to save my life then you love me enough to do that real honesty okay if you're real honest if I'm your friend I don't need to be politically correct or you don't need to be co politically correct what I mean is that when you are politically correct so for example I'm driving to a cliff you're gonna say to me um, excuse me uh, uh, I'm sorry but you're driving off the cliff uh, bro please, please no you say no stop in the name of love you don't need to be politically correct okay real honesty the Bible says the truth sets people free the Greek word for truth is reality so it's like saying you shall know reality you need to know what's real so stop being deceived stop daydreaming stop in stop your fantasy okay what your friends tell you you play too much or your your friends tell you that you know you you mess up your life too much you listen to them or you tell your friends tells you to focus but focus they want you to succeed in life okay what else is going to tell you oh, who else is going to tell you these things okay who else will tell you to fix your life who else will tell you to become better who else will tell you that you have greatness in you if your answer is my parents my family my cell leader my pastor and my friends then you have a real real relationship you should thank god for godly relationship 
So if you have your friends, you know who they are. You, after this uh, service, you can go to them and you tell them, thank you for being with me. Thank you for this real relationship that we have. Because this has to come from the people who loves you. Those people that are fiend, they don't care about you. You are an entertainment for them. And who knows enough about your life to speak about you? See, it's hard enough for your family to know everything about you, okay? Because they don't know who you are. Uh, they don't know the real you. Well, maybe they can or, yeah. You probably tell stories partially to your parents. But to your friends, you tell the whole story, okay? You tell your mom... Prom was good, mom. You know, Come on. You, we, 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 <laughs> we, we, you know, we ate a steak or whatever, and then yeah, it's fine. Then we danced a little, and then we went home. Yeah, that's what your mom. That's what you tell your mom. But when you tell your friends, ah, oh, bro, you, you know, prom was good. We held hands. You know, then I put my arms around. Hello, can you relate? Yeah. So there are so many things that we partially tell our parents, we partially tell our cell leaders, we partially tell, you know, uh, you know, those that there is a bit of authority. But when you see them as friends, you feel like you belong. This is why I said earlier, loyalty and access. You feel, you feel like you're welcome, you feel like you can be who you want to be, okay? So, for example, like now, even though you are so grown, like me, I'm grown, yeah? You still don't tell your parents the whole thing. Just like my mom doesn't know half of the things I've done in the Philippines. But my friend does. Yeah? But mom, don't worry about it. Don't even bring it up. I'm a new creation now. Yeah? Fast is fast. Let me buy them, be buy them. So, because these honest people, look at this. Let's go back. Because these honest people, those who doesn't tell you the truth, want you to be stuck because they are also stuck. Your friends might be stuck and they're pulling you down. So that you can also be stuck. Do you love me enough to tell the truth? To bring out, to bring me out of my fantasy, and bring me out or bring me into reality. If people uh, do not want that from you, then they love their relationship with you more than they love you. In other words, you can say, "Oh, I don't want to tell them because he'll get mad." I don't want to tell them because I won't get discounts anymore. I don't want to tell him or her because, you know, I won't be invited at their house. Their steak is nice. But you love and value that relationship more than the person. Okay? This is very sensitive. This doesn't mean people are bad. It just means that people are broken. Whether you like it or not, they have hidden motives that they don't themselves know. Okay? But it sooner or later it will come out. That's why... There are certain people who really love your relationships more than they love you. Who, look at this, who trusts you enough to tell them their business, but you don't tell them the truth? If they tell you, for example, if they tell me their business and I know that the solution, I know how to help them, and I don't say anything, then that's not real honesty. Because you do know that's the part of the reason God made you to be their friend. Hello. So you got to be careful that we do not upset the wrong person. Because sometimes in the name of not upsetting people, in the name of not upsetting your friends, you upset God. Okay? Number four. Real liability. Say reliability. Real liability. Proverbs 18.24 says, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. It's, it, it means I don't just come to ruin because my friends are evil. Okay, I also come to ruin if my friends are unreliable. Okay, Reliable means dependable, trustworthy. Can I trust you? Okay. Now look at this chair. I'm sitting on this chair because I trust it. Alright? Now look. Can people sit on you? Can people sit on what you say? If you say that I'll be there tomorrow, can I sit on that? Or am I going to fall? If you say, look, I won't hurt you anymore, can I sit on that? 
or am I going to fall? You tell your husband, your wife, look, I love you. Can I sit on that or am I going to fall? Maybe fall in love, but... Uh, <laughs> you tell me that you're going to do your devotion and send it to me tomorrow. Can I sit on that? You know who you are. Yeah? Reliability is predictable. When someone is trustworthy, it's predictable. I can predict how you're going to behave in certain seasons. Because if you keep on sitting, <coughs> if you keep on sitting and you keep on falling, that means you kept on sitting on people who, are, who kept dropping you. You mad because everybody wants to sit on you, but you cannot find anyone to sit on. I can predict how you're going to behave when our relationship goes bad. Where can I just find somebody to sit on? Reliable. Okay? Why don't you have my back as I have yours? Reliable. And number five. Real encouragement. No one, we know that no one is going to be perfect. But your friends cannot be character projects. In the, in the reptile world, they call it projects. Like you add you add different coloration, you add, you add maybe orange and whatever. You cannot do that to your friends, okay? Your friends is who they are, but again, some of your friends, those are your assignments, okay? We have friends, we have associates and assignments. And some of us are trying to, you know, uh, make character projects our friends. And because they got so many characters issues that they haven't dealt with, okay? They can never really be a friend to us because your success or your uh, movement, your growth can intimidate them. What I mean is this. I don't care how spiritual you can get, but can you handle my business? If I tell you my business, will you be able to control yourself with that business? Okay. How will you be able you know, to handle the success that I have when you are not yet there? Okay. How's your business right now? This is where many of us, many of the people, even in the church, messed up. Because we place people in certain categories based on their work, but not based on their fruit. Okay? You don't discern true false prophet. The Bible says, uh, Jesus said, By their fruits you shall know them. That's in Matthew. Okay? By their fruits you shall know them. You can tell who's real and who's fake by their fruits. So you determine who belong in your life by their fruits. Because people can say one thing, okay? They can believe it. We can also believe it. But they don't have uh, the capacity, okay? Or the capacity of character to actually carry out what they mean. So, you know, sometimes we have these friends that they will say, uh, I won't hurt you anymore. But until I see that you pass." You, you skip that opportunity to, of hurting me, then, you know, I cannot trust you. I have to be careful. We have to be careful because sometimes we cannot uh, afford to be wrong about this person twice. God gives us wisdom, my, wisdom, my friends, okay? If they don't have the character, character issues worked out, they can't be the person who encourages you, okay? Look at this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So when you're down, who's going to encourage you? Who's going to call you when you are down, when something happens in your life? Who calls you? Your friends must be your biggest cheerleaders. They have to be an unceasing uh, encouragement to you. Always in your corner. Never, about, never mad about your happiness. They are never intimidated by your success. They smile and they mean it. Okay, so smile next to your, the person next to you. Say smile. Oh, you just smile. <laughs> look at the person next to you and smile. So look at this. 
Jesus showed us three levels of relationship. And I will end here. I will continue next week, so stay tuned. Jesus showed us three levels of uh, relationship. Okay? Remember, uh, Jesus had uh, Peter, James, and John. Okay? And his disciples and others. So, if we look at this, number one is friends. This is the reciprocal kind of relationship. They deposit to you, they de you deposit to them, they withdraw to you. They it's a give and take kind of relationship, okay? Hurting kind of relationship. They bring bad news and, yeah, you know, the whole shebang, okay? Then number two is the associates. There may be re some reciprocity, but you may see the relationship different from one another. Watch this or listen. Because sometimes you are telling me your business, okay, look, you tell me your business and you think I'm your friend, but in the, in the back of my head, you're, like, you're just my associate because of your character. Because of, I, do, I believe if I tell you this, you won't be able to handle it. Do you understand? So we, it's associates, okay? They're not the same as friends. That's why I don't trust you enough for my business. You may get my time, you may get my money now and again, but you don't get my business, okay? Associate. Number three, and last, is the assignments. Those are the people, these are the people that God has assigned for you. More often than not, you won't get anything in return because God assigned you to these people to pour out your life, okay? So that they can also know God. But when you know that they are not an assignment, you don't expect them to be a friend okay amen so now you can tell you check your list later you check your list when you get home oh man you are an associate because you can't tell them your business your business will either destroy them okay it's either that you will produce jealousy or anger bitterness you know all these things okay that's why we have to be careful who we tell our business okay look at this in conclusion you can't be so lonely that you're trying to make your assignments your friends. Let me repeat. You can't be so lonely that you try to make your assignments your friends. So, you know, I know some people who dated their assignments. For example, God showed you this person, but you thought they are your friends. You start dating. Okay? And now where are they? You don't see them in the church. You don't see them anywhere. Because you cross that line. You cross the line of assignment and friendship. Like I said, if we're not streaming right now, I would say so many things. But hey, thank God for uh, digital, the, the online. digital online. Look at this. You're not meant to cross that line because your job is to make them uh, know Jesus. Okay? But you you just so lonely, you jump, you took advantage of their <laughs> their vulnerability and whatever. You need to know which is which so you don't put the wrong people in the wrong category. God called you to be a friend to certain people, not all people. For certain seasons, some may be longer than others, some are lifetime, okay, some may be seasonal, but we also need to learn when the season is over. Because sometimes in a season, yes, you were friends. Yes, we are so close and whatever. But what happened? There's only two things that happen. Either you grew or I grew. Okay? It's either they grow or they, you, they didn't. So, and most of the time when that happens, when you see them, many people try to act like what they used to be. Okay? They try to act like where they no longer act. And the only way you can remain close is as if you keep being that person you're not anymore. You're not. Because you're a new creation, okay? So let me show you uh, if this friend is for your future. When you meet your friends, which one of you, which one of you come out? The old you or the new you, okay? The old you or the new you? If, you're bring, if they are bringing the old you, okay, they are not a sign for your present and your future. Again, if they are bringing the old you, they are not a sign for your present and your future. It means the season is over. 
Okay? I'm not saying that leave your friend or whatever. Hey, they just become your associate or now an assignment. Okay? So, I've had enough with my past. You know, if you are hanging around with your friends, you tell them I've had enough with my past. I'm already struggling to die daily. <laughs> and when I'm with you, you bring out the best of me or the old of me, you know. It's so easy. We already, all of us, have problems putting our life down, like the old of us. Stay there. Don't get up. Okay? Because what we want is a progressing kind of relationship. A, a, a relationship that is becoming Christ-like. Okay? This is why I've had enough with these things. I need help to bring out the best in me. If your friends right now is not bringing the best in you, you have to reassess, okay? Recalibrate who your friends are, who you spend your time with, okay? Because what you need is help, all right? Now, for my challenge, this is the challenge. My life, you know, my life would have been so messed up if I didn't have a lot of good friends or real friends. I had friends who are like Joab, they, they watch me, they see my life as an entertainment. Uh, they want my life to be destroyed. But I thank God for those Jonathans that I have met along the way. Some of them were not as close, but when we see each other, they still bring out the best in me. Okay? But look at this. Your pastors, your friends, your cell leaders are your friends. Okay? The one who invited you to this live stream right now is your friend. They care about you and they love you. The church, the whole church, not just Pagasa Center, but the whole church needs to be the friend that the world needs. I believe God is going to use us effectively in the area of being a friend, a true friend. Okay? Because the best words that had helped me in my life did not come from the pulpit. It did not come from a person who's holding a mic. It didn't come from, you know, a book or whatever. But someone holding a phone, okay? My ex-girlfriend, I love her enough that I married her. She was my best friend. Telling me, bah, you can't quit. You can't quit. You can't do that. Because there are times that I just want to quit. I told her, no, I stop. I quit. She said, oh. And then she tells, you know, she tells me, she looks at my face. What are you going to do then? Huh? What are you going to do? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, you're right. I can't quit. Because... <laughs> Or for some, some time, I want to go, I want to leave, I want to, where are you going to go? You know, we need this kind of people in our lives, all right? Whew, I'm sweating. Whew. Come on. Many times we want to quit or many times we, we're going to need that kind of encouragement from a friend. And I told, you know, we all need, we all need a friend. And I believe God is calling you to be one. That's part of your purpose and your destiny. Now I'll end. Some of you right now are experiencing a deficit. Because I believe God is speaking to me right now and speaking to you right now. That you have a friend deficit. Okay? This time of isolation, this time of pandemic, God allowed this to happen in our lives right now. For a transformation. Okay? God needed to do something in you and he did not want you under the influence of any people, okay, or anybody, until he completes his work in you. He's telling you right now, now that you are healed, now that you are complete, okay, God will send you someone, not to complete you, but to complement you, okay. Before you need completing, uh, and God is the one who completes you, God needed to heal you from your pains and hurts that was done in your heart because of this friends or mismanaged relationship someone today you need Jesus in your life you need a friend and people will fail you okay but Jesus won't he's knocking in your heart right now to have a real relationship with you to encourage you to help you with your hurts and pains you know if this is you right now I want to pray for you and say this prayer with me Okay, let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I humble myself before you. I heard your words. I heard that you can be my friend. I invite and accept you in my heart. Forgive me from all my sins so that I can also forgive others. I now submit to your friendship and lordship. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of life. 
And for those who are hurting, I know there are so many in the church. You can't hide it. You know, God knows your heart. So many people are broken right now because of mismanaged relationship. He knows the betrayals, the disappointments, all the pains, and all the hurts. God is able today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He is willing to help you right now. Let me remind you that the main essence of the gospel is about forgiveness. Okay? Sometimes we are hurting because of what others have done in the past. Okay? But right now, God is speaking to you. God is telling you, I want to heal you. I am willing to heal you right now. And God wants you to release these people. Okay? So, close your eyes right now and, you know, just mention their name. If you don't want to mention it out loud, just mention it to God. You say, Lord, I release this person right now. I release forgiveness right now. You know, God is willing to heal you. If there is someone in your heart, in your mind right now that needs your forgiveness, you know, release this forgiveness. Whoever needs that second chance or even third chance in your life right now, release them right now. Mention their name before God and God is healing you. And let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you that you are reminding us to manage our relationships. The Lord, we are owed to love one another. The Lord, help us, Lord, to love everyone so that people around us will know who you are in our lives. Holy Spirit, have your way in us that we can be a friend that the world needs, not the world wants. Change us, Lord God. Transform our characters and attitudes to be more like you, that we can be the right friends to our friends. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your uh, message. Lord, I apply your precious blood in the hearts of these people who have received it. Seal it, seal it in their hearts, Lord God. Don't let the enemy take this seed away, but Lord, let it bear fruit, much fruit, Lord God, that fruit that will last. So again, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for people who have listened and uh, accepted you today. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Woo